Hey, okay guys, back. In this particular video, I wanted to talk a little bit about my uh, approach to building models, and I'd introduced it in my first video, that idea of how I work in uh, phases. So in this particular model, the Wild, Wild Willie uh, Borscht Winged Express uh, Altered Rod, um, what, uh, and then here's my approach, right, that we talked about. Uh, in that first video, I go through an ideation phase, then design development. Uh, that's when I gather items up, and then I go through fitment, measure everything, sand. Uh, then I get into building, uh, painting, and uh, decaling. So over here in the ideation phase, and uh, I mentioned a bit, some of it in that uh, unboxing and looking at the instructions. Um, you know what some of the ideas that I initially had and of course you'll always have others as you go through the model uh, but even before I go there I want to say uh, what is going on I think in modeling at least going on with me and I got this idea from um, you know working around uh, some, I mean I was I was an engineer but working around guys who were the the real um, you know eyes and hands that, that carried out the designs uh, the general approach there is you, you sort of start off uh, as an apprentice and you've got like a, a very abbreviated and small uh, toolbox. You, know, you might have a couple items in there uh, that you're expected to learn how to use completely and master. Learn how to completely use and master. So, you know, you might have a hammer, you might have a screwdriver, um, you know, Phillips and Standard, and you might have a saw. And no, no power tools yet. <laughs> okay. And then as you uh, progress in your career um, you know you graduate up to you know you can always tell these guys because their toolboxes are getting bigger and so they, they they sort of have a bigger toolbox and guess what there's more tools in there and if you talk to these folks uh, they are masters of not only the tools they started with but now they're they're adding more tools and becoming masters of those tools and then uh, there's graduation and progression as time goes on and they become masters uh, of even more tools and more capabilities, uh, more skill by which, which they can apply them to different types of problems. And guess what? Their, their tool cases are taller. So you can tell who's who in the zoo by looking at who's got a taller tool case. And then, of course, you get into your master journeyman, journey person type, uh, uh, you know, uh, applications engineers and, and, and craftspeople. Um, Leave them alone. These guys, they can, these folks, they can solve just about any problem you can throw at them. They've seen it all. And they got all the different kind of tools to, by which to handle it. So I think in modeling, uh, this type of journey is occurring or hopefully should be occurring. And it certainly has been occurring with me. I mean, I started once upon a time with just brushes and, and you know, little jars of paint. And then, you know, wow, you've got an airbrush and, and then, you know, different, ma you know, masking and, and, you know different other kinds of tools and you know I don't know maybe I'm somewhere in here now maybe so um, that I wanted to say a little bit about that uh, at least in terms of I framing what I think is going on now you know just me and it has to do with my background you know coming up uh, you know being an engineer being an architect uh, and a couple different uh, you know types of engineer structural electrical engineer you know et cetera, et cetera. so I, you know yeah I got I've had more more uh, college than maybe most people should be allowed to have. I don't know. But anyway, um, just was curious. I was just curious. So um, this is my approach, which is probably, you know, certainly a product of that. And so you know, on the Wild Willie, um, I had some different things I wanted to do. Um, definitely, you know, I wanted to do that candy red uh, paint job on the body of the car, uh, like we see uh, in the picture on the box art so that kind of candy red uh, paint job I want to have that and uh, but this time I'm going to uh, do use uh, what's called clear red so rather than an opaque uh, lacquer I'm going to use uh, some what's called clear red and it's, it's gonna you know it's very clear okay so I got that and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do my all cat all clad chrome technique which is two parts uh, after priming right so you got to prime it really well uh, uniformly, then you've got to go over with the uh, black and um, and then the chrome paint. Oops, I, those people, their paint. And uh, then um, I'm going to use a pre-wired uh, distributor 
Uh, last time I tried to do this, I used phone wire and, and stripped, you know, multi, multi strand foam wire and stripped it out and took the black uh, wire. Uh, this time I decided to, to actually use a real uh, pre wired distributor, which I, I got somewhere um, off the internet. So I'm going to have that. Uh, and that's going to be finer wires. And uh, well, here it is. And um, yeah, you can see here. I'm going to use a pre-wired uh, distributor, which I think will look dynamite on that engine, right? Okay, it's got a coil wire in there too. So, got that. Um, going to get all the seams off of the the frame, the tube frame, because my idea was to potentially have the T-body removable. So you're going to see a lot more of the frame than you'll see just. Um, as it sits in the picture, I want to be able to make this part removable. And when you do that, um, you know you're gonna you're gonna see a lot more of the tubes. So I want those to look what, round in profile. And then, uh, like I said, you know, I'm using various shades of black on the tube frame because I'm going to show it off a little bit more. Uh, and then, you know, as we talked about um, in one of the segments, you'll see we had to open up the front frame because the way it was actually molded in the model over here was not the way it really was in the real model over here i mean that that was open the tube frame came actually all the way exposed to the from the frame back to the firewall was exposed it wasn't like this so you have to open that up and then uh, when it comes to priming uh, maybe it's kind of that progression of process, you know, graduating up type idea. Um, once upon a time when I modeled, I used, you know, rattle can primer. And then I graduated to that, that company from Japan. They make a really nice uh, super fine uh, prime. And then, but then I wanted to try to use uh, this stuff which uh, you apply with airbrush, and I'm still trying to master this. Um, I mean, it comes out pretty good. I mean, I, it, it takes a lot of col coats to, to build up your prime. Um, so it doesn't go, you can't cover it all in one shot. So you gotta have a lot of patience when you apply it. You don't wanna go over the area over and over again too much because uh, it's gonna look uh, bad. So, um, oops, don't wanna make you guys seasick, but what, your, what you get if you if you do it right is you get a very nice um, buildup with with all of the detail being uh, preserved, right in your in your parts, right. That look, that's going to look pretty good when the color goes on it. You still see all of those rivets there. Um, you're seeing all of the detail on the supercharger and and in the wheels uh, there. Um, not being a brand endorsement, I'm just saying that it's, yeah, I think it's a pretty good, but I'm still trying to master it. <clears throat> okay, so, and it came out nice on the, on the tube frame section too, and helped me see, without doing a heavy duty coverage, it helped me see some of the areas where I did need to do a little bit of extra uh, sanding to approach the profile I want before final color coat goes on. Because, right, as we keep saying over and over again, no amount of painting will cover up bad fit so there's that um yeah so so there we are and and uh, we're just going to keep forging on um with this uh, wild willie borscht uh, turning out to be a great kit a lot of entertainment for the dollar i would say yeah i, I consider it a, a great model kit like maybe one of the best i've built so far that way <laughs> oops <laughs> that's what can i say it's a really great kit bye